from the old to the new. On July 6, 2012, President Obama signed into law the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act. This legislation sets seven goals for transportation within our nation. These are safety, to achieve a significant reduction in the traffic fatalities and serious injuries on all public roads. Infrastructure condition, to maintain the highway infrastructure asset system in a state of good repair. Congestive reduction, to achieve a significant reduction in congestion on the NHS. System reliability, to improve the efficiency of the surface transportation system. Freight movement and economic vitality, to improve the national freight network, strengthen the ability of rural communities to access national and international trade markets and support regional economic development. Environmental sustainability, to enhance the performance of the transportation system while protecting and enhancing the natural environment. Reduce project delivery delays. To reduce project costs, promote jobs in the economy, and expedite the movement of people and goods by accelerating project completion through eliminating delays in the project development and delivery process, including reducing regulatory burdens and improving agencies' work practices. There have been large amounts of research done by the National Cooperative Highway Research Program and others to try to address these challenges. Here in Nevada, we face the same issues as the nation. When we look at our interstate corridors running through Nevada, there are several challenges that need to be addressed in both the highway and the railroad. So what is the solution? The Nevada Department of Transportation recently had UNLV perform a study on a revolutionary new Nevada land ferry concept. But what is a land ferry concept system? A land ferry system is similar to an ocean ferry, but on land. Any mode of transportation that can get to the land ferry port can quickly get on the land ferry. On the interstate, there will be digital message signs indicating to drivers that the next exit provides access to a land ferry port. The digital message sign will instruct the driver to tune into an AM radio station. The information will be broadcast to the driver telling their destination departure times and approximate toll cost. Once in the port, drivers will have the option of leaving their vehicles in a parking garage or taking their vehicles with them. Space will be made for truckers during winter closures with electrical hookup or the weary traveler can stop at the rest stop. Transit service will be made available at the port integrating all transit systems within the corridor. Alternative fuels would be made available at the port, helping foster in alternative vehicles and by using the land ferry, extending their operational ranges. Vehicles will be weighed and their lengths measured at the tolling station. This will all be automated to determine a toll. Once a toll is charged, vehicles are queued up into their proper lanes. The land ferry only stops at this port of destination. Drivers will pull their vehicles onto the platform for loading, then the drivers will put their vehicles in park and will be carried to the waiting areas in front or the back of the train on moving walkways. Charging stations will be available for electric vehicles during transport. Once all the passengers are in the secured areas, access gates to the loading areas will be closed. Pedestrian overcrossings will be made available for loading passengers that have either parked their cars or have used the transit system. For companies like UPS or Federal Express, the driver will leave his truck and will go over the walkway and pick up the arriving load. For long-haul truck drives, they will ride on the land ferry. It's estimated that by the time the passengers disembark from the train and new ones embark, the entire train can be unloaded and reloaded. The anticipated travel speeds will be between 80 and 110 miles an hour, thus reducing travel times. By building a land ferry system, we can start to achieve the goal set out by Map 21. Nevada could capitalize on the economic potential that lies within our state. We could reduce the maintenance cost of our highways to a long-term sustainable level by transferring our transportation energy burden from oil to available wind, solar, geothermal, or natural gas energy sources. The land ferry can help America become cleaner and energy dependent. In a recent report prepared by UNLV, it is estimated that a land ferry along the I-80 corridor would create over 45,788 jobs during the three-year construction period. The project would create 318 permanent jobs for the operation of the system. In addition, the project would cost $4.36 billion and would provide benefits of $7.08 billion. The toll would be approximately half the fuel cost if you were to drive.
it's more of an efficient system because we're using a train and we're also using uh, local energy supplies. So basically what we're doing is we're transferring the energy burden from oil into renewable resources that we have here in Nevada. We would like to continue our research about a land ferry system for Nevada. A system of this caliber requires significant effort to determine the most efficient and effective technologies that can provide the best results with uh, the, a reasonable budget. So what do we want to do? First and foremost, we would like your support in any way you can give it. For example, we would appreciate your support in further research in the Nevada land ferry system. A project of this caliber requires significant effort to determine the most efficient and effective technologies and methods to provide the best results with a reasonable cost. There are at least three quarters in Nevada where a land ferry system could provide benefits. One research question is, which one is the best quarter for the land ferry system in Nevada? There are many opportunities for refinements to the existing technology that could be used to build and operate the system. UNLV will be further studying the economic component of the land ferry system, the best suitable routes within a state, the best alternative project delivery method, and legal issues concerning the project. When we look at this, we're doing the land ferry concept basically removes the truck traffic from the interstate system and puts them on a, a device that will actually move them from point A to point B. Gives these operators an incentive to actually use the system and actually get their rest in they're as they're supposed to. So basically we're improving safety by putting them on the system and removing them from the roadway system. On the second point is we're reducing our exposure risk by having this vehicle traffic off the interstate system and on the land ferry. When these operators do get off the land ferry again, they're going to be, should be rested and should be able to continue on their journeys and be more alert and improve the safety on the roadway systems. The third thing that comes from this is the fact that we'll be able to build in grade separations instead of at-grade crossings for most of our crossings. Of course, we won't be able to build all grade separations, but for the major traffic where we have high-speed fickle traffic and high-speed trains, we should be building grade separations and removing that particular risk. The land ferry, you can think of a, a regular ferry in the ocean. Uh, a bunch of cars come up to a ferry and then they're, they're uh, as a group, they're brought to another destination. Um, it's a really good complement for our electric car technology in that uh, electric cars have a limited range right now of maybe 100 to 300 miles of range and before they have to be plugged in and then it takes a little while to recharge them uh, a minimum of an hour to maybe several hours and uh, by using a land ferry uh, being able to drive those cars onto some kind of moving platform whether it's a, a truck or a train uh, and they can also recharge while they're they're being ferried uh, to their their uh, long distance destination. So basically uh, when they arrive at that destination it gives them the benefit of having a full tank of electricity or a full battery pack full of uh, electrons and then being able to uh, go and drive in wherever they want to under their own power. So it gives us the best of both worlds. How will the system be funded? Given the cost of developing a Nevada land ferry system within Nevada, there will not be enough federal, state, or local funds available. Therefore, a public-private partnership will be required. We want you to support us by changing any regulations that might be in the way of developing a Nevada land ferry system within Nevada. Depending on who you are as a viewer, we would like you to help make available either federal, state, or local funds or participate in helping acquire the necessary private funding for the Nevada Land Ferry System. The Nevada Land Ferry concept is a simple idea, but so was the container for shipping. And we can all see how that idea has changed how we move goods into and out of the country. More research analysis will need to be done. With that said, concept could quickly become a powerful tool in a transportation planner's toolbox, one that can change the economic face of Nevada. By developing partnerships between all stakeholders involved in the corridor, vast benefits could be achieved for everyone. The face of change can sometimes be gradual, and other times quick and drastic. Seldom do people understand the point in history in which we are at. This is that time when we all need to work together to achieve mutual benefit. Please visit the UNLV Nevada Land Ferry website for more videos, reports, and general information. And thanks for watching.